In this video, we'll be looking at two file compression tools, one native, one not so native. The first one we'll be looking at is Zip. Now, if you're a Windows user, you'll be quite acquainted with this. If you're a Linux or a FreeBSD user, yeah, you might have heard of it and you might not necessarily use it all the time. But in this instance, it can be useful in case you ever do come across a Windows file that you need to either compress or decompress. Thankfully, it's uh, quite rare. So the first thing you'll have to do is install it. And you can go PKG install zip or, or you can install via ports in the archivers forward slash zip section and make install clean. Right, to use this, uh, there are a lot of options, uh, but we're really gonna keep it basic uh, in this particular video. And that's just so we can compress and decompress a file. I'm gonna clear that screen. I've got a directory with a little PNG uh, picture of one of my first computers, which is a lovely Dragon 32, which is a like a Tandy color computer uh, clone from back in about 1982. And so what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to compress uh, this file and turn it into a zip. And there's the lovely, lovely computer in all its glory. You can move that down there. Right, so what we need to do, and it really is as simple as typing zip. And what you do first is put the name of the finished zip file, which it just, this will make sense as you use it. So uh, we've got dragon32.zip. So that's telling it that's the name of the file you want to create. And then followed by the actual name of the file itself, which is the dragon32.png. So pressing enter will result in the creation of a zip file with the picture inside. And it really is as simple as that. You can tweak it, of course, to uh, get a better compression, but this is how you can just basically do it. So we're just going to remove the original picture and we're left with the zip file. And there it is. You can both see it in the file manager and also uh, when we list the contents of the folder. And so to unzip it, we, well, funny enough, we use unzip. If you just type unzip, dragon32.zip. And as you can see, it's extracted it and it's back at the bottom there. And we'll just click on it to make sure it's the original one, which it is. So that's in its very basic use. It's fairly quite simple, really. And logical too, we got zip and unzip. But what if we want to compress a folder? Well, again, it's the same thing. We're just gonna first remove the zip file. We're gonna first create a folder called, I don't know, Dragon32. There we go. And I'm just going to move the picture into that folder. And just to list the contents of the folders to check it's in there, which it is. So again, if you just type in zip, we'll have a look at the commands because there's something that we need to add in order so we can uh, compress a folder. And we need to add, uh, if I can find it, hyphen R for recurse into directories. Because if we don't, we'll just really get a, a zip with a directory that's been added with nothing in it. So when you tell it to recurse, it will grab everything within the folder as well. You would think that perhaps it would automatically compress everything or add everything in the folder, but it doesn't unless you tell it. So we need to add uh, iPhone R. So we'll just uh, list it again. There we are, there's the folder. And so we put zip iPhone R, remember for recursive. Dragon32 folder, so the name of the file we want to create, dot zip and then the name of the source that, of the thing that we want to compress. In this case, the folder. And as you can see at the bottom, a new file has been added, dragon32folder.zip. And within that should be a folder, and within that should be a picture. We'll just list the contents, and we have a original folder and the new zipped folder. And I'm just gonna change the name of the original folder to dragon32 um, original. There we go. That's in case I mess up and I lose the original. I'll just list them there and there you can see. So I'm going to unzip the Dragon32 folder zip file. 
And there we go. So it's created the original one again. Well, the original, original. You know what I mean. And we just go into it. And there we go. So really, you can zip individual files and folders. And in its most basic form, it gets the job done. So if you ever... If you're running a, a FreeBSD system and someone hands you some files that have been unfortunately zipped in the Microsoft standard, uh, now you know what to do with them. And it's not all command line. We can actually uh, use a graphical uh, tool to help us too. So here we are in the folder again, the zip test folder with a Dragon32 folder right there. And there's a picture inside. And we're using KDE on this occasion. So if you right-click on the folder, you can see a, quite an extensive uh, list of choices, which is the KDE way. And what we're after is the compress option there. We can create a, a tar file, which we'll be doing later, uh, or a zip file. Or you can compress to a different location if you wish. So uh, click on that, and it will instantly create a zip file, which is as easy as it gets, I think. Of course, it does require, I suppose, the zip to be installed, but, you know. And you can actually... Uh, check the contents of the zip file without unzipping it. I'm saying zip a lot, so you have to excuse me. And there it is. And it tells you the file and the directory structure therein. Which is very nice. So you don't need to touch the command line if you don't want to. So we'll delete that and unzip this. And it's a matter of extract, so the option has changed to extract rather than compress. You can extract it here, extract it somewhere else, or uh, do what you want. So we'll just extract it here. And again, if you want to compress it, there it is. So really, it's, um, it's quite simple. You can compress and decompress really just by clicking on a menu option, which I think is pretty cool. So that was the uh, zip way of doing things. Now we're going to have a look at a more native option, and that's using tar and gzip. So we're in the same folder, and using tar is as easy as zip. We just put tar, and this is where it gets a little bit trickier. We need to put some options in order to create the file. And we're using, uh, at the, again, at the basic level, we're using P for preserve file owner and permissions. Create, it's in his C, Z, Enable gzip compression and F to create the resulting file. So put them options before the file name you want to create. So it's a bit like zip in that sense. You have to put the file first that you want to create and then the actual contents following. So in this case, it's the folder. So we're actually tiring a folder. And there we go. So we've just created the dragon32.tar.gz and we've got the original folder there. We're going to change the name, like we did before, of the original folder. Just in case things go wrong, we need to get it again. There we go. And it's been changed. So we need to use tar, and then xzf. And we'll just uh, copy and paste that there. And it should have created an original. So if we list it again, and there's the original back, the Dragon32 folder. So in some respects, it works very much like zip. Uh, you know, the options, uh, but there are one or two switches that you need to put in first. And again, we can use a graphical uh, solution if we don't fancy getting down and dirty with the command line. And just clean up a little bit here. And delete that one. Right, so we're back to the folder again. So if we, again, like we did with the zip creation, we just go down to compress. And it's the top option. It says eras dragon 32targz We don't need the other two. And it will create it. I mean, a tar means just a tar ball. So you're collecting everything together. And the GZ is the GZIP. That means to compress it. The tar ball in itself really isn't compressed. And you can extract it as we did before. So really... Both options are very good, I suppose. Zip in its uh, universal availability. So yes, there we are. Two ways to compress and two ways to decompress. 
But basically, they work the same. It, it depends, really, on what you prefer. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.